Okay, this video will explain a convenient feature called Connections. Let's start by adding a rectangle to the canvas. I'll click the rectangle object in the library to enter insertion mode. I know I've entered insertion mode because the on-screen mouse cursor has changed from the standard arrow to a crosshair icon. Now we'll click and drag anywhere on the canvas to add a rectangle. Good. Now I'd like to add a second identical rectangle. One easy way to do that is to just duplicate the existing rectangle. There's a few different ways to do that, but probably the easiest is to copy drag. Hold down the Option key on the keyboard while you click and drag any existing object on the canvas. You'll see the object is duplicated, and now you're dragging the new copy. Okay, now I've got a good copy. Now assume I'm creating some type of diagram, and I want to draw a line between these two boxes. To draw that line, I'm going to use the Smart Path object. If you haven't watched the instructional video on Smart Paths yet, please view that now. So I'll click on the Smart Path object in the library. Again, I can tell I've entered insertion mode because I see the crosshair mouse cursor. Now I'll click anywhere on the canvas to begin my path. And then I'll click a couple more times to add a couple more points to my path. Finally, I'd like my path to connect to the squares, so I'll move the mouse into the proximity of one of the rectangles. When I do that, you'll see the five circular blue connection nodes that appear. These are my five connection point options. If I click with the mouse on any of these connection nodes, you'll see the node flash, and that means a connection between the path and the rectangle has been made. Now when I move the rectangle around the canvas, the path is connected, and it moves too. I can unconnect the path from the rectangle by first selecting the path, and then simply drag the endpoint handle away from the rectangle. Now when I move the rectangle around the canvas, the path is no longer connected. So I'll reconnect the path to the rectangle by dragging the endpoint to a connection node and releasing. You'll see the node flash again and the connection is remade. And I'll do the same with the other end of the path with the other rectangle. This time, however, I'll connect to the center connection node. Okay, so connections are great, but so far setting up the connections between our paths and shapes has been a little bit tedious. Now I'd like to show you a shortcut. First I'll delete my path by selecting it and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. Okay, say you have two shapes on the canvas like I do now, and you want to draw a path between them. This is a common occurrence when creating diagrams. There's a shortcut for that. First, select one of the shapes. You'll see a blue round handle sticking out from the bottom of the shape. That's the connection options handle. Click it. You'll see a radial menu of line types appear. I'm going to again choose the smart path line. That's the type with the curvy line because it's the most powerful and convenient. So we'll click on the smart path icon and notice that I'm now in insertion mode again. The cursor has changed from an arrow to a crosshair and I'm inserting a smart path object. I'll add a couple of points to the smart path, and then I'll connect the other end of the path to the other rectangle by moving the mouse within range and double clicking on one of the connection nodes that appears. I'll choose the bottom connection node this time. See the node flash and the connection is made. Now I'll add some arrowheads to my path by selecting the arrowhead types I want from the arrow palette in the inspector on the right. And as I move my two rectangles around the canvas, notice that the connections are working as expected. Also note the slightly different behavior of the two connections. In the rectangle on the left, the path is connected to the center of the rectangle, and so the corresponding arrow always points exactly at the center of the rectangle. On the rectangle on the right, I'm connected to the bottom of the rectangle, and so the corresponding arrow always points to the specific point on the bottom edge of the rectangle that I originally selected. 